Chapter 13, part two. Okay, I'm going to continue with the things that I think will help rehabilitation success in America. Number four, raise the standard and demand outcomes of rehabs. I'm sure you read this in the book, but I I still can't believe it that most rehabs, like most, most, like probably 90% or more do not track their outcomes. They don't track their success rate. They don't track if the person that came through their program is doing well or not a year later. They don't care or they don't know how to track or they don't or can't be bothered with it or I I, I don't know. I mean, I guess if they're, I don't really know, to be honest. And there's just no excuse anymore. I could see back in the day when you're just getting started with your business and you're just trying to get people in the door and help them and hopefully they get some help. And, you know, I I just, I hope they do well. I don't know whatever happened to that person. And granted, there are people who will not respond to survey data or to pick up a phone from someone who's calling them to ask them how it's going or not or whatever. That, that, That does happen. You can't, you can't track every single person, but to not have a system in place any that is tracking outcomes of people is really ridiculous at this point. I mean, imagine if you had, if you were marketing a drug, if you're, you worked for the pharmaceutical companies and you were marketing a drug and you didn't know if that drug worked or not, you had no idea you, you, you were selling it, but you had no idea if it worked or not. Do people get better from this? I don't know. I have no clue. How crazy is that? I mean, I just feel like, you know, th- there has to be some accountability here. And I'm not asking necessarily for like government accountability to come in, although they should be interested in it as well. I'm more asking that the community itself, the rehabs to raise the standards on each other. Hey man, why aren't you tracking your outcomes? Like what's up with that? Like, how do you know if your program is a 1% success rate or an 8% success rate or a 12% success rate or 20? How do you know? How do you know if you're not tracking? Why aren't you tracking that? Cause I, you know, I want to know I've been tracking for years and years. I would rather go to a place that has bad outcomes, but at least they track them because when you measure something, then you look at it and you go, Oh, that number dropped. What, what have we been doing differently? Oh, we, we put that new person in charge of that department. Things are going bad. Uh Oh, we, we better start looking at that. At least you're looking at it. At least you're trying to measure it. And it's not just, is somebody sober or not? Did they actually ingest a substance or did they not? That is a measurement. That is a measurement. And that's the one that everyone thinks of when they think was the program successful or not. But let me tell you something. If you went through a program and then they made you so miserable that you couldn't even get out of bed to reach that bottle of alcohol, is that a success? Because you, you're not drinking anymore, are you? You're so miserable and depressed that you can't even get out of bed, but you're not drinking. That's not success. Come on, it's real success. Like, are they happy? Are they healthy? Are they, are they working in a job and making their own income? Are they becoming more self-sufficient? Are they speaking to their families and loved ones? Are they engaged in their lives? right? These are, this is success. It's not just sober or not. We have to, we have to raise the standard you guys. And we have to, we have to demand that, that, that treatment centers have our tracking outcomes and they know what they are. If you're a loved one and you're shopping around, you should ask them for studies. If they don't have studies, ask them, why not? Why don't you have studies? Imagine like a hospital that's treating patients with no data from anywhere, not knowing what they're doing. No one knows if the surgeon who cut that person open and sewed them back up, if, if every time someone walks out of the hospital, they die like the next day, like obviously people would know that that doctor would be, you know, have his license taken away or whatever. The hospital would be sued. How, how is there no tracking of outcomes of most most programs still in today's age, there's many ways to do this. There's many third party companies you can hire. Yeah. It costs a little bit of money. Okay. If you don't want to pay that money, then you got to figure out a way to do it. You got to, you got to hire an independent firm somehow that can do this for you. I mean, you, you can't do it yourself because you're, you can skew the reviews. You can say, Oh, my success rate is hundred percent because my brother called everybody and they said, yes. I mean, come on, you can't do that. But it, it's just crazy to me that that happens and, and that the and that the insurance companies are not asking for it. Realize right now when you have your, your, your insurance card 
and you, let's say you go to your insurance company, you ask for the, the nearest rehab that will, that they will cover because your loved one needs help. And they say, well, okay, we'll go to this place. You should ask them, well, what's their success rate? And they're going to shrug and say, I don't know. We don't, we don't know that. We don't even ask that. Well, why not? You're referring me. You're telling me my loved one can get help here, but you don't know what their success rate is. You have no idea how well they do with their treatment. And, and what they really believe is that no one really gets better anyway. That's typically what they just do the math, right? At the insurance companies. But, but that should not be the case. It should be, well, I want to know. I want to know why you're recommending this place to me other than the fact that they're in your network. Like what, what's good about them? What, 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 give me some reasons why that program would be good to send my, my loved one to. I don't know why they don't do this. I don't know why they don't ask. Uh, we've been pro- trying to provide this for years and years and years that our outcomes should dictate that we get more referrals from them and, and higher rates actually. Really, the higher rates come when you are not causing problems for them. And I actually, it's interesting enough, I actually just got, Elevate just got a, a nice bump in rates, believe it or not, which I can't believe, uh, from, from one of our uh, in-network providers that we work with, and, and, excuse me, in-network, in, the insurance companies that we're in-network with, and because, not because we have a higher success rate, not because we do better, not because the people that come through our program uh, have a, go on to live a better life, but because the, the patient, the people don't complain about us to them. So literally the insurance companies are more concerned with how much they get phone calls from upset people because of the rehab than if the person was sober or not, or how well they did. So that's how they measure who they want to give higher rates to who gives them the least problems, which I would argue that if you're doing a really great job and you're getting high success rates and your clients are happy and their families are happy, you're going to get less complaints. I mean, does that not make sense? If you're a place that doesn't care and there's your success rate is zero, you're probably going to get a lot of complaints anyway. Uh, number five, <laughs> financially incentivize success and good results. All right, so here's where I'm kind of bringing it home with the business. Okay, insurance companies are for-profit companies. They're not nonprofits. Rehab, most rehabs are for-profit companies. They're trying to make a profit. They're trying to they're trying to make money, right? Good, fine. It's America. Like I'm with it. I I, I agree that businesses should want to make money, and uh, I, I I absolutely support nonprofits. But I absolutely agree that if an entrepreneur wants to put his blood, sweat, and tears and, and, and work into building a business, that they should be financially rewarded. I don't see anything wrong with that, um, even if you're in the healthcare industry. However, I don't understand why good results does not equal more money because an insurance company literally is designed to be profitable. They run numbers so that they can make sure that they make more money in premiums than they pay out. Well, how would you know if a a company, let's say you have 10 rehabs and you send everybody to the same rehabs, but one rehab is extremely successful and the rest are not successful at all. Let's say there's 0% success rate and one is astronomical, you know, 40% success rate or something like that. Why would they not send all the people to the one that was the high success rate. If nothing more, forget about competition or anything, just, just, just profits, just profits. Why wouldn't they send it to the best one? Because obviously, obviously the one with the high success rate is going to mean that those people are going to have less medical bills in the future, less future rehabs, less ER visits, less, you know, Hey, I ran my car into my telephone pole cause I was drunk and now I've got to be, you know, life flighted to, you know, the hospital. These things happen because people are addicted or alcoholics, right? Why are they not saying to those people that get high success rates, we're going to give you more money and we're going to give you more referrals because you are saving us money. You're doing a, such a good job. We don't know what you're doing. And maybe we'll look into it and maybe we'll like investigate and we'll, we'll tell our other uh, people in our networks that they should be doing those things because, Hey, it's a win win for everybody. It is a win for the insurance company. When you do a good job, forget about the patient, 
just financially to the bottom line of the insurance companies, it's a win-win, right? They make more money. I just don't understand why they have not done this. They, they're very good with numbers in other ways. They're really, they, they hire the smartest people in the world at math to help figure out how they make their profits. But they don't say, let's send people to the ones that have a higher success rate. I mean, that doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever. And why wouldn't the government issue grants? They all talk about big game, about uh, you know helping handle the opioid crisis, and we're going to tackle this. And they raise their tax, you know, they they raise our taxes so we can tackle the opioid problem and things like that, right? They raise money through our tax dollars, and they throw it into a black hole of inaccountability. Because if they were to pay grants to those companies, if, they, if I was to get grant, if I was get a $10 million grant from the government because they saw that our success rate at, at Elevate was really good and they want us to put more, more Elevates around because that will help the community, it will help uh, the profits of their insurance companies who they're very in bed with, and also you know assist the community in just helping people get better, that would be a smart thing to do. Forget about ethics, just from a business perspective, from a financial perspective, right? I mean, if, if there was a program that could have a hundred percent success rate and it took one day, well, I mean, Hey, I, I'll close elevate tomorrow and, and just everyone can go get other jobs because I would rather people be able to have a hundred percent success rate in one day than, you know, than, to, than, than otherwise. So, Why wouldn't you funnel taxpayer money to the thing that's harming society, to the people that are doing the best job at tackling that problem? How does this not automatically happen? I mean, these people are our representatives in government. They're supposed, they they don't spend their own money. They're spending our tax money, right? This is, this is their, they are stewards of our money and they say, okay, there's these problems in society. When, when you go into downtown in most cities, there's all these people who are addicted and laying on the ground and you know the, the businesses don't want them there because the customers don't like it. And you know these people are suffering also, like they should be taken care of somehow. Why? And it's profitable for everybody, everybody, if you send them to places that do better than places that don't. Why is, has nobody thought of this? It makes no sense to me. I I just can't even believe it. Why money would not be funneled based on results. I just, I I can't comprehend it. You can hear me get a little bit like emotional and passionate about it because really this is, this is kind of the crux of the book. Like wake up America. What are you doing? What is going on? Why are you not interested in who's doing the best. It, it, it works in a lot of other places. You, you, you know, the guy that can shoot the basketball into the, into the hoop, the best you're paying the most money to, or the team player, right? The guy who can score you the most points, the guy who can take you to the championships, that guy gets more money than the, than the guy that warms the bench. Doesn't he? I mean, the guy, the wall street, you know, uh, the, the, the wall street guru who can make the most money in the markets is gets the paid the biggest bonuses, Right because they're making the most money for the company that it works all in in all other industries everywhere, but why not in addiction treatment? It just, I I don't get it guys. Someone explain this to me. Why an insurance company who's designed to, to generate profits or the government whose job is supposed to be to, you know, take the taxpayer money and make society better would not put that money towards places that have the best success. I don't understand. And I just think no one's ever really asked the problem, excuse me, asked the question like I'm asking it. Why is this not happening? Well, I'm asking the question because I believe, and Hey, you can, you can have better success rates than me. And if you, and if, and if you get more money than me, Hey, so be it. I, I need to work harder. I need to figure out what it is that you're doing that is so much more successful than me. And I got to make that happen. Because we should be about, it's not, this is not, oh, it's got to be fair across the boards. No, it's whoever is doing the best job should get rewarded the best. Do you pay the guy who comes to fix your, your car? He's, if he's the best, are you willing to pay a little bit more? If you know that when you drive off that lot, there's not going to be a problem with your car. Of course you do. I mean, people pay for the best in every aspect. 
I'm just asking for people to apply that same thing to addiction treatment, the same motive that I want the best. And I, I would think it should be even more because these are our loved ones. These are our loved ones. And what ends up happening, real, the really funny thing is people will pay for these really expensive programs, right? They're on the beach in a mansion and stuff like that. And it costs $90,000 for 30 days or something like that. People are paying for that. You know why? Because they love their sister or their son or their mother or whoever. And they believe inherently, because typically it works this way, that if you pay the most money, the things that are most expensive are, are the people that are doing the best job. That is not the case. That has to be verified. You have to verify these things with third-party studies, outcomes, data, right? It should not be that. We don't charge that much as those people, and we get better results than those people. And I'm not going to call any names out. but And if someone does better than me, I'm happy for them, and they should have that success. So if we financially incentivize good results, we can change America practically overnight. We really can. Put me in coach, you know, <laughs> call me in as a consultant in, in the government or something. I mean, I, I can turn this stuff around because all you do is just reward the right people and all of a sudden things will happen and things will work. And the competitors, those guys that have been sitting back, putting their feet up with 0% success rate, making a bunch of money, they're going to, they're going to, they're, they're going to wake up and they're going to realize I, be, I better start hiring some people that know what they're doing. I better start bringing in, you know, some talent that, that can help raise these success rates because I'm going to be out of business if I don't. And you know what? That's the way it should be.